Hello everybody, welcome to my channel today. So as promised, I am still rotating through my makeup. I am pulling out old palettes, trying new things, mixing things up. And one of the other challenges to myself was to step out of my comfort zone. And that means trying colors I wouldn't normally wear on my eyes, face, lips, whatever. So in particular, I got um, this sultry palette. And of course, I gravitated to the browns. I went a little crazy and I actually wore the coral, which really surprised me. Um, however, these grays here were just a no-go zone. And yesterday I was getting ready. I thought, you know, I'm going to use my sultry because I really, really love this palette. And um, one of my subscribers, um, her name is Virgo and then there's numbers and I believe her name is Deirdre and I also follow her on Instagram and she follows me and she's been posting um, lip looks of the day. She's doing a challenge herself by posting new lipstick so I'll link her Instagram below if you want to see because she's been doing um, a lot of it so she's trying to try trying to go through her makeup as well. So she always um, posts eye looks as well and she says she really pushes herself out of her comfort zone. She doesn't like putting herself on camera, which I can totally relate to. Um, I don't like taking photographs of myself and putting on Instagram. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I don't really post many photos. And um, she's been doing that and she's been using colors that she wouldn't normally do and she always gives me encouragement to try other colors. So yesterday when I was looking at those grays, I was thinking of Deidre and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. And I loved it. I was shocked how much I loved this gray. I just thought I would look sallow and tired and terrible and I found that it actually opened up my eyes more and I really liked it. And coincidentally, I got my lucky bag yesterday from Beautylish. I'll also link that video below if you're interested. And um, I just, I got so many compliments on the eye look and I, when I was editing, I was like, wow, I really, really like that. So that I'm going to uh, video it today for you guys to show you how I did it and um, to hopefully inspire you guys to start going through your collections and pulling out those palettes and trying those colors that were kind of your no-go zone. Um, I really never thought I would use a silver or a gray eyeshadow and now that's probably one of my favorite in the whole palette, if you can believe it. And I'm actually have decided I'm going to take that to Australia with me. So um, anyway, if you would like to see how I got the look, I'm also pulling out some of my other uh, makeup to try. A lot of the things I have worn on camera before and some I haven't. Uh, so if anyway, if you're interested to see how I got this look and use those gray shadows, then please just keep watching. Okay, so I have you zoomed up nice and close. I have clean skin, it's all prepped and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on my Fenty Eyelid Primer and get my eyelids done first because it does take a little bit longer to dry than most eyelid primers. So we'll quickly do that and broken record here. I'm not crazy about this but it's the only one I have and I haven't bought a new one yet. Yet. There we go. And now I am going to use this Celebration Foundation Illumination <laughs> by um, It Cosmetics, the one I got from the shopping channel, and I love it. So it's just a compact, and I'm gonna use the It Cosmetics um, Foundation Brush. This is the dual side. This is my favorite of them all. I have quite a few of them. I can't remember where I got this, but I think it was in a set. It might have been even the shopping channel. Um, I think it came with this and then the foundation, but I can't totally remember. But I do really like this brush. It's my favorite of all the IT brushes. Um, I don't know why. It's not the flat top. It's, I don't know, I just love it. And I like how it has the concealer end on the other side. So I have um, done a get ready with me using this foundation once already and I did mention to you guys, it's definitely not as quick as it was on TV on the shopping channel when they were doing the demo. Like the girl did her makeup like in 30 seconds, but I find this one does take a little bit longer. Or maybe she just didn't put on as much. I don't know. I just find it takes a while to build it up. And 
I went to my dermatologist um, the day that I wore it. Um, I'll give you an update on that in a second. But when I came in, the lady, the receptionist always does photos like before and after. And she said to me when she was doing them, she's like, oh my God, your skin. At the time I was wearing this and then I wore the blush that came in with that showstopper. And she said, just write down whatever's on your face. I'm buying it. I have to buy it. And she works in the dermatologist's office where they have uh, Jane Iredale and all sorts of nice, luxurious makeup. And she just loved how my skin, she said, your skin just looks amazing. It's so glowy and illuminated and shimmery, but not sparkly. She just loved it. So anyway, that's my little info on that. So obviously... <laughs> This uh, foundation is a good match for me. So anyway, back to the dermatologist. Um, I went in originally about this cyst and he injected it. And it seems like it might be ramping up again. The last time I had one of these cysts, it had to be injected twice. And um, this one, it's still a lump. It's not sore or tender like it was, but it's definitely still something brewing under the surface. So what I've decided to do is cut out dairy again. Um, I did cut it out completely last time. That was last summer. And I hadn't had any of these cysts for a long time. And then sure enough, um, two, maybe three weeks ago now, I got this one. And I know some of it is related to that Drunk Elephant Proteiny Cream uh, because I had a cyst last time I used it. But I think the severity and all that kind of stuff might have something to do with dairy. So anyway, I let dairy slowly creep back in like around the holidays. It slowly worked its way. And then I started having quite a bit and putting yogurt back in my smoothies. So I've just eliminated all of it and just be done with them. We'll see how that goes. So I'll give myself a break from dairy and see what happens. Um, so now I'm gonna use concealer for under my eyes. I'm gonna use the It Cosmetics one just cause I'm using It Cosmetics on my face. And then I also mentioned to you guys, so when I went to the dermatologist about this cyst, um, I had done a consult a while ago on Botox. I have had it done many times before, but I haven't had it done, I think, in over a year. And um, anyway, we had a consult about it, and I said I'd think about it. And I just thought, you know, I'm just going to rely on good skincare. And if any of you are new to my channel, I'm blind in this eye. And... I have a whole story about it if you're interested, so I'll link that below. But what's happening is because this eye never grew, it's from when I was a baby, um, this eye is really, really small and it's collapsing. Um, so I just find this one is so much smaller and yada, yada, yada. And when I was getting Botox, it just kind of lifted it a little. So they kind of were a little bit more symmetrical. Um, I know we're uh, splitting hairs here, but it just, I felt better about it. So anyway... Um, I stopped having it done. I just, it was costly. I had to have it done like every two months. So anyway, um, I was going through some photos cause I was, um, filming a video and wanted to insert some older photos of myself. And in those photos was back when I was getting Botox and I could see my eyebrows were level. Um, so that's kind of an indicator to me, um, that the Botox really, really helped and my eyes looked much more symmetrical than they do now. I mean, it's not a miracle um, product or whatever you want to call it, but it helps a little bit. And when you're like me, you just want even just a tiny little bit of a help helps. Um, so anyway, I did have Botox done on Tuesday. It's now Friday, so I haven't seen any results yet. It usually takes about 10 days, um, but I'm hopeful that um, I'll get a little bit of a lift. on. I just have it done on this side just to lift this Eye, so we'll see how that goes. So next I am looking for my concealer here and it's a jumble. Um, so I'm using my nice clay to Poe one that I got um, from Marshalls. This is in the color Ecru and I'm just going to use that same end and I'm just going to cover up this guy here. See it's just got some swelling and I always have a little bit of redness here because I wear reading glasses much more frequent than I would like to and it sometimes leaves a little dent. So I'm just going, just covering up any little bits of redness. 
There we go. And I'm just gonna put this on my lips because my lips are so pigmented. And I'm gonna put this um, MAC Prep and Prime Lip Erase. It's almost like a lip balm, but it's got some color to it. And I just find it mutes out my lips and then any lipstick I put on top is the true color because you're on a blank canvas rather than putting them on dark, dark pink lips. It's just an old thing I've been doing forever. So there we go. Now I am going to, I don't need powder because that was a powder foundation. And I'm gonna use a bronzer. I actually <laughs> pulled this out of the archives. Um, I'm doing rotating through all my makeup. And I, this is a sample, as you can see, it's tiny. It's the Benefit Hoola bronzer. And I actually wore it yesterday and I really liked it. So I'm gonna use this big um, brush here. This is my um, Hourglass Veil brush, the dual end one. And then I'm gonna use the big side here and I'm just gonna go in here. It just gives a nice bit of warmth. It's a really nice um, bronzer. I can see why it's so popular. I don't think I would go out and buy it. Um, also because I have so many, but it is quite nice. And it's a matte bronzer and it's just kind of a neutral, like it's not um, super cool and it's not super warm. So it's just perfect. And it just gives me a nice little bit of glow. And it's a nice handy little sample size and there's lots of product. So there we go. I've just done a bit of bronze. Now I am going to get into my palette. So this is my sultry. And like I said, these colors in here, I mean, I looked at them and I thought they were really pretty, but I just thought, yeah, right. I'm never going to wear that. But I bought it because I enjoyed all the other ones. And then, like I said, um, because I'm rotating through makeup and I'm trying to push myself to try all the colors in palettes and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And I tried it yesterday and I loved it. So let's get started. I am going to use, where did I put them? Ah, my uh, Sigma E25 blending brush. This is one of my favorite brushes for eyes and I'm just going to go straight into Slate. And yeah, there is a lot of kick up in this palette, but I, I really don't mind. And I just put this in the outer V, like that. Just starting off nice and light. And again, I go in the outer V. And it just blends itself out. And I don't know what it is, but I just find it makes my eyes seem more open. I would have thought grays would have just made me look like dull and tired and but I just actually found it had the opposite effect so I really liked how it turned out that's for sure and I got a lot of compliments in my video um, I wore this in the Beautylish Lucky Box um, opening I'll link it below if you're interested um, I did my opening yesterday and I was wearing this eyeshadow and a couple of my regular subscribers who know I don't wear these colors uh, even commented that they really liked the eye look. So it must have been a hit. So there we go. That's the outer portion there. And I'm just going to use this MAC 283. Uh, I'll link it below and I'm going to go right into that silver and that color is called Cyborg. And I'm just going to put that in the middle here all over my mobile lid, right into the inner corner. So it's not super sparkly, but it just gives a nice little bit of subtle shimmer and glow. And I'm doing the same on this eye. So I have decided, so I've been messing around with all my palettes, pulling them all out, rotating. Uh, that's part of my challenge for this year is using products. I own not project panning, but just, you know, rotating through stuff, trying different shades and palettes and not just always choosing the same ones. So as I've been doing that, I've been kind of taking a mental note which palette I'm gonna to take to Australia with me. Palette, palettes, I haven't decided, but this is it. This is the one I'm definitely gonna take. I'm also gonna take a little um, palette of four singles. Um, so I'll show you guys all those. I'm actually going to do that when I get home. I did that last time when I went on a trip and that way I can tell you guys what worked and what didn't. I just found that 
um, a much better format and um, a lot of you guys really enjoyed that too. So now I'm going to go with my little Sigma pencil brush and I'm going to go into the color slate again. That's that matte gray and I'm just going to go underneath and kind of line my eyes here just in the first three quarters of my eye and same thing here. Now I could probably line with this black or even do a little bit extra in the corners, but I'm just going to do exactly what I did yesterday. And I actually used this, um, this was a gift with purchase. It's the Estee Lauder Double Wear and the color is, I think, graphite? Graphite. So I'm just going to line my um, top lashes with that. And I'm going to do some mascara and because it's kind of a boring little thing, I'm just going to quickly do that off camera and then we'll come back together and finish the rest of my Okay, so I finished with my mascara, I did my brows, and now let's do some blush. So now that the Pillow Talk has finally been re-released, I can actually start wearing this on camera again. I bought it uh, when it came out in September and then it quickly sold out and then it was unavailable. So I try not to wear products on um, camera, or at least get ready with me's definitely. Um, unless the products are still available. So here is the Pillow Talk blush and I wore this yesterday and I thought it went really really well with this kind of pinky gray mauve look, this kind of cooler tone look. So here we go, I'm just going to do a swirl and then you kind of go through the middle, she calls it swish and pop. And I'm using a Sigma, this is the F30, uh, I think it's called a, a large powder brush but I'm using it as blush. I've got big cheeks. <laughs> And it just gives a nice dusty rose color, which I think goes really, really well with the eye look. I love blush. <laughs> and I really focus on the outside because these are the middle there is pretty shimmery. So there we go. And keeping with Charlotte Tilbury, I'm going to pull out this guy again. This is my Bar of Gold uh, Trio. And let's use the pink color. I haven't worn this on camera for a while. So I'm going to use the other end of this Hourglass brush. And I'm just doing a C over here, maybe a little down my nose, a little on my Cupid's bow, a little on my chin. And there we go. Just very subtle. This is a really nice little palette. Um, I haven't really been wearing a lot of highlight later. I, lately, I've been wearing a lot of really shimmery blushes, so um, I kind of nixed highlight when I do that. So anyway, it was fun to get back to that. And then lips yesterday, I wore um, the MAC World Liner, and then I wore this Bite um, Meringue color on top. Um, but I think today I'm going to use the Pillow Talk stuff. So I'm still going to use the Whirl uh, liner because it is a nice um, dark pink. And I've told you guys before, I don't really care for the Pillow Talk lipstick. It's, um, I guess it's just because it's so cool toned. It just... Um, makes my lips look really thin and um, it's just, it, they almost go gray. So I, I do like a little bit of a mix. So I'm going to use the pillow tuck first. This matte formula is really nice. It's not super drying or tight or anything. So that was, that's the color on its own. So I don't know if you can see or maybe it's just in my head that my lips just don't look as full and it's just kind of dulls my complexion up. So I'm going to put this um, kind of lighter color on top. This one is called Valentine. Oops, I picked up pillow truck again. Um, I'm not 100% sure if this is still available um, after I've just said I only do stuff on camera. Um, but it's just such a good combination for me and um, it was actually recommended by Wayne Goss. When Pillow Talk came out, he said, uh, put Valentine on top. And this is a different formula. I think this is the kissing formula. And um, it's just a little bit more um, creamy. 
So yeah, this isn't my favorite uh, lip combination. I find it's just a, a little bit on the dull side, but I think it works really well with the look. And I'm just gonna quickly fix and fluff my hair. And that's it. Perfect for going to Walmart, which is what I'm doing today. But I really wanted to film this look because um, it actually shocked me uh, how much I really liked those grays. I'm just, I never would have thought, but um, I'm so glad I pushed myself out of my comfort zone. And thank you, Deidre, uh, for inspiring me to do that because she's kind of pushing herself out of her comfort zone too. So I really appreciate that. And hopefully I'll inspire her to push herself um, and continue to push herself. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.